The RTS 5050 may be the best overclocker and undervolter of the RTS 5000 series. Matter of fact, you can get such a big performance increase by tweaking this card right. It is not even right, in my opinion, okay? So with that said, welcome back at Modern PSU, and here we are with yet another one of my undervolting and overclocking tutorials. Now, usually I do an undervolting one and an overclocking one, but this time I feel like I would be wasting your time by separating this, because there is only one reason you should go with undervolt, and most of you should actually overclock this time. So with that said, we are doing all in one because it's the same app and same very similar procedure. Now, few disclaimers as usual. So this is gonna work on every single model of RTX 5050. It doesn't matter which brand, MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, Palit, Inno 3D, Galax, whatever you have, it's gonna work. Now today I'm using an Asus Dual just because it's the one I have on hands and the model is not gonna influence the results we get. What is gonna change the results we get is silicon quality. So some GPUs are simply better than others. There's nothing we can do about it. So your GPU may be more lucky than mine and vice versa. I have tested 10 before making this video and I made the average and that's how I'm making the video. Now, for this video, you're gonna need MSI Afterburner and Heaven Benchmark. Both of them will be linked down below in the description, okay? So make sure you download them and open them up and we can go in Windows and get started. But before that, just promise me one thing, actually two things. First thing is if the video works for you, I recommend you guys go check my channel because I show you how you can overclock and undervolt your CPU, RAM, and I also have a very good recent tweak on how you can basically set the timer resolution on your computer and get like basically a lot lower latency. It's like a hack I found out. So just check my channel for more tweaking. That's the first thing, if this video you like. And the second thing is, if all of this works, maybe subscribe so I can keep doing this, okay? It's a tough job to do. Let's go in Windows. So first of all, should you undervolt or overclock? Well, you should overclock. The only reason you should undervolt is if your card is running too hot, drawing too much power, or if you are power limited, okay? So this card, unless you're running in a too little case, or your card has issues, or you got a really bad custom, you should have none of these three problems with the 5050. You should overclock. With any other GPU, it is better to undervolt. So with that said, let's go ahead and start via the overclocking, then we'll do the undervolting later. So how do we do it? We open up Heaven Benchmark right here. We uncheck the full screen option and we set it quality ultra, translation extreme, and resolution we can put 1920 by 1080. Now we run it and then we also open up Afterburner. Okay, I recommend you pull it up via the Windows bar if you can't get it on top. Now, if you do have multiple GPUs like I do here, you need to click here so you can select your 5050 over there, just like this. And now I'm gonna make this extra easy for you guys. So you want to overclock? Nice, just max out the power limit. If you can, if you cannot, it's no problem. Go on the core clock, give it 250 right there, hit enter, go on the memory clock, Max it out, hit apply, no. And as you can see, it froze. Now I did this on purpose because you should never max out the memory on this GPU because this has GDDR6, it doesn't have GDDR7. So if your PC crashes because you overclock too much, don't panic, just turn it off, turn it on again, and then let's go with the actual number over there. Here we are. So as I was saying before, max out the power limit, 250 on the core clock, but then the actual number you want to input is simply 1000 right there. So hit it and now 1000 is gonna work for every single one of you, so you don't have to stress. Now this is a very safe preset, I tested out a lot of GPUs to come out with this, and you can just save this and you're good to go. How do you save this? Very simple. You go on save, click on one, click on one, click apply, click over here to start with Windows, go into settings, start with Windows, start minimize, Click apply, click OK, you're ready. OK, finish. If you want to close the video, you can close the video. This is how you overclock your card. However, why did I show you the crash? Because basically, even, if, even with the safest settings ever, you need to test this out in gaming. How do you test this out? Just game for half an hour. If it doesn't crash on the heaviest game you have, you're good. In case you want to get more of this, I'm going to give you some guidelines. So the memory, none of my GPUs was reaching 2000 because it's worse memory than other RTX cards. So I think at best you can do 1500, okay? But you need to be lucky to do 1500. I don't recommend you do this, but if you're lucky, you can do it. I find on average 1400 is top end on my cards, okay? And on the core clock, you can actually easily, like uh, most cards can do 300. 
I just do 350 to be extra safe, but 300 you can do on most cars. And I find there is a hard wall around uh, anything over 300, really, at 350. You can't really do it anymore. So if, if you want to spend a lot of time uh, testing, uh, these are the max. I would say this is your realistic max if, if you want to just test it out quickly. But with that said, in case you are in the little percentage of people who actually want to undervolt, let's go with the undervolting. So undervolting is a little bit more complicated. So you want to reset everything by clicking here. And what we want to do is go into settings and unlock voltage control, voltage monitoring, click apply, click OK. And now we can start. So you want to click on curve editor, pull out the curve. My first preset is going to be if you want to retain average performance, which as you can see is stopping out at 2900 megahertz right there, around there. So if you want to retain that, you simply want to grab the 925 millivolt voltage point. You want to hold shift and bring it all the way up to match stock performance. Now, I recommend you stay a little bit under it. So if your stock performance is, as you can see right now, 2895 right here, you want to stay a little bit lower. So I, I recommend you do, for example, 2850. And once you set it to around stock performance, you want to click on the void, hold shift this time on the void, and select the rightmost part of the curve and flatten it out. At this point, you want to hit apply. And I still recommend you unlock your power limit just to make sure you don't incur in any spikes hitting power limit. And then I also recommend if you're after performance uh, to really match stock performance and actually get better frame times, that you give it plus 1000 on the memory still because it's free performance. Why not? So this would be our first preset, the one where you retain stock performance while dramatically reducing power consumption, power draw, etc. But two extra presets as usual. So the one preset is the efficiency one. For efficiency on this card, I find uh, the spot is this one, basically where the curve changes. So I recommend you grab not the first, but really the first works. So 825 would be a great spot to be at. Uh, but I find 850 is just a much better performer. So I recommend you grab the 850 point and bring it up to around 2600. I find it there. You are losing a bit of performance, but you're retaining most of it and you get the absolute best efficiency. So for this one, you really don't need to unlock the power limit, but I still do it out of habit. And uh, if you're not after performance, just don't overclock the memory because you can save maybe one degree there. But personally, I would do it. So this would be my efficiency preset. And then last one, your maximum performance preset would be something like achieving around 3 gigahertz on the core. So to achieve 3 gigahertz, I find we generally need 975 to be extra safe. You can probably do it with, with a bit less, but if you want to be really safe, I find you need it. So just grab the 975, hold shift, you want to go all the way up to 3000, and then just uh, fully flatten out the curve. And in this case, definitely unlock power limit and definitely give it plus 1000 so you can get your overclock stabilized right there. And just a little guideline, you can push it all the way to one volt, so 1000 millivolt, if you do have a power limit gap large enough, like this one on this ASUS card. But I think 925 is a great spot. And on average, you can expect to go all the way up to around 3.1 gigahertz if you really want to push it. I find higher is very hard with lower than stock voltage. So with that said, this little bit longer video combining overclocking and undervolting is finished. So if you liked it, please remember your promise. Check out my other stuff. Maybe drop a like and subscribe. And see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.